Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Monday to everyone. Mm. I got some pretty good sleep last night. I pray you all did as well. I am back. I pray to everyone having a, had a amazing weekends, those that celebrated birthdays or uh, kids had birthdays, just whatever your weekend ended up being. I pray that it was a weekend to remember. <laughs> um, but I'm coming back to you. Continue reading in Jesus in Red. And the day is May. The is no 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 no. Is it May? Lord have mercy. Oh no 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 no. Uh, you see you see what I'm saying? It sounded like I had too good of a um I'm sorry. It's October 3rd. I had my paper right, but anyway, we're going to read and we're going to just keep on moving. October 3rd. And the title of today's devotional is Escape the Corruption. Escape the Corruption. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indeed to us. And do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. And that's Luke 11 and 4. Las Vegas is called Sin City for a reason. To the world, sin is another word for bright lights, excitement, and pleasure. Vegas built on a foundation of foundation, greed, adultery, homosexuality, blasphemy, and of course, lust. The Bible says that, that Christians have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And in 2 Peter 2 and 20, we are drawn to the specific sin of sexual lust as a moth is drawn to a flame. My Lord, Jesus. One of the greatest revelation any of us can ever have is that Sin is always married to death. I mean, you got to understand that that's your bride. <laughs> you got to understand that that's your soulmate. The city of lights has a very dark side. Death is sin's wages. That's your wages. That, that, those are your benefits. When you are married to sin, you know, when you have... Um, what do they call that? Um, I can't even think of right now. But um, again, when you are married to sin, your benefits is death. There, there, there's, there's just no way around it. However, its, its full payment isn't seen, seen this side of the grave. The Bible speaks of second death and the agony of hell. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm not going to hell for nobody and for no reason. There's not a reason. There's not anybody that I'm willing to go to hell for, period, point blank. I don't care who you are. I don't care how close we are. I don't care our relationship. I don't care about our status. It don't mean I don't care about you as an individual. It doesn't mean I don't care about your soul, but I, I got to make sure I make it in because there's nobody that's going to make sure I make it in more than myself, and you should be doing the same. Engagement. That's what I wanted to say. You know, whether you're married to sin, whether you engage to sin, your wages, your benefit is death. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because <laughs> I just couldn't think of what that word was. In Christ, the marriage between sin and death is over. I mean, it's just, period. When you cross over to Christ, now you're in a new relationship. Now you have full benefits. Now your wages is eternal. We are divorced from it. I mean, you know, there's a celebration. There's a, cere there's a ceremony. You know, some people, when they divorce, they actually celebrate. You know, and you know what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. When we give our life to Christ, there should be a celebration. We celebrate everything else. Every time you look around, there's a ceremony. Every every time you look around, somebody's being um, acknowledged for something, 
um, promoted to something, um, graduating to something. What about when a soul is won to Christ? If the Bible said heaven is rejoicing, why don't we rejoice? Why don't we um, have a ceremony? Why don't we do that? That's a thought. And that's a very good thought. Man, that was good. The Holy Spirit really just dropped that. If heaven rejoices over one, why do we don't rejoice? Why we don't rejoice? Mm, 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 mm. And so we are quick to confess any sin, lest we fall into grasp. We are also quick to forgive because if we refuse to forgive, we fall into sin and rare and rare in danger of serving the evil one. We got to be careful. If something, if you know, because listen, if the Holy Spirit dwells within you, you're not going to be able to walk around your brother and sister and know you have art against them. There, there, it's, it's just, it's, it's impossible. Some people make it look possible that because um, they, their, their uh, flesh is in operation. If you got, if you, <laughs> listen, if you truly living for Christ, you're not going to be able to walk around your brother, or your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your niece, your nephew, your brother, your sister. You just not going to be able to do it. You ain't going to get no rest. So I tell you now, if you got an order against somebody and you resting, you better find out who you really serving. Because the, it, it, those two, they just don't, it's just like oil and water. It's just not going to mix. You got to get things right. The Bible said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Now, let me put a springboard in there. You can apologize and you can get things right. But if the person that's receiving the apology don't want to receive it for whatever reason, the Bible said, dust your feet off. And it said, take your peace with you. In other words, <laughs> don't you be sitting up worrying about it. Don't you be sitting up stressing over it. No, take your peace with you and move on. I've had to do it. And you're going to come a time in your life, you're going to have to do it. Because there are certain ways people want the apology to look, to come. They want to go back uh, uh, when you was 10 or when they was 10. Come on now. We adults now. If it's coming from your heart, apologize. Move forward. You can't, you know, <laughs> I, I don't understand this stuff. It's crazy. But I, I listen, I'm not missing heaven for nobody. If you want to hold on to whatever you want to hold on, God bless you. And I'm going to continue to pray for you that one day you mature, that one day you grow up. Now it's time to do some soul searching. Is there anyone I secretly resent? That's a question mark. See, this is the time where soul searching and that's and I tell you, don't you search yourself because once we search ourselves, we're going to deliberately look over stuff. There's things we're not going to acknowledge. But if you want to be pure, if you want that image, if you want that Christ-like uh, attitude, personality, love, if you want that, tell the Holy Spirit to search you. I, I told you, just like when you go in for an x-ray and they put your x-ray up on that light, you see everything down to the bone. If you want... <laughs> uh, pure results, ask the Father to search you. Because you and I, we're going to look over some stuff. We're going to miss some stuff. We're going to look at stuff and be like, oh, that's small. But it may keep you out of heaven. And here's the prayer for today. Father, please let the fear of you keep me from even being tempted by the, by the evil of sin. There's so many ways to sin. And the devil will have you, oh, just do a little of this. It's okay. Do a little of that. It's okay. Nobody sees you. God sees you. He said he sit high and he looks low. So I may not see you. They may not see you. But God sees you. And that's the one you got to answer to. You don't have to answer to me. That's a beautiful prayer. Father, please let the fear of you Keep me from being tempted by the evil sin. There are so many sins that can just creep up and we minimize it. 
we justify it. But we got to get into that place where we're sensitive to the spirit. That if the spirit said, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't watch that. Don't entertain that. Don't text back. You know, because the Holy Spirit, it'll speak to you. It, it'll tell you in heartbeat, put that down. Turn that off. <laughs> don't put that on. Don't go in there. Oh, it, it was just, just like I'm speaking to you. Now, you, you know, you can turn the volume down if you want to. Because <laughs> this flesh got volume too. Don't think it don't because it, <laughs> it do. And when that Holy Spirit get loud, so does this flesh. Why? Because this flesh won't want what the flesh want. And the devil's going to always try to tempt you with something. Listen, you know the devil's tempting you with something you know is not of God. So you know it's not God. You don't even have to ask, Father, is this you? Now, come on now. <laughs> come on. People be doing some stuff. But that's pretty much the end of the devotional. It was short and sweet and to the point. Escape the corruption. We got to get to the point where we escape corruption. The Bible says, um, God, Sean, the very appearance I mean, if it just look like evil, it's telling you to avoid it. If it look like you're going to get into something, it says to avoid it. We got to stop trying to play with this flesh and think this flesh don't have, don't have no power because it do. But it'll show you how powerless you are. Start, start playing with the devil. Start getting on the devil's merry-go-round and his swing and his seesaw. When you get off that merry round, you're going to be so dizzy, you're going you're gonna to end up in somebody's bed. Honey, you better know what you're getting into when you're climbing on the monkey bars. You'll be climbing into something you ain't got no business climbing into. You better come off the devil's playground. Honey, this is, this thing ain't nothing to play with. See, people are doing too much playing in, in, these, in these last days. We ain't got time to play. The Bible said, make your call and election sure. When he called your name, you better raise your hand like you got on your secret deodorant. I'm sure. This is no time to play. This ain't no time to be sneaking around. This ain't no time to be getting into stuff because you think don't nobody see you. This ain't the time to be hating your brother or sister. This ain't the time. This ain't the time to be holding grudges. This ain't the time to be having art against one another. This is not the time. The time is now. Get it right. Whatever it is, get it right if you can. If you can't, the Bible said you're free to dust your feet off. And stand, if you walk off and, and leave your peace, knock on the door and get it back. You know, just like if you leave your phone or if you leave your purse, you not. Hey, I, I forgot something. I forgot my purse. You know, I forgot my phone. I forgot my wallet. That's your peace. Take your peace with you. Because everybody, if they're not in that place to either give a, a, a apology or receive it, it just is what it is. But when you know you have done what you can do, you're no longer held accountable for what they won't do, for what they won't, re won't receive. It's no longer on you. So you're free to just move forward into the things of God. I'm telling you, I had to do it. And first, it, it, it was hard. It was difficult. But when you understand people and how people are wired, sometimes people are just not in that place of letting go. But th the Lord gave me a vision. I understand you still hurt. I understand you still bother. But would you stand there and hold a hot skillet in your hand, your bare hand? If it's causing pain, let it go. If it's causing blisters, let it go. If it's causing anger, let it go. You are in control of letting it go. You are in control of letting go of your pain. You are in control of wanting peace, wanting, wanting truly to be happy. You are in control of that. Put that hot skillet down and move forward. I've never seen nobody stand there. And, and, and you know, those kind of iron skillers, them jokers get hot. 
it causes pain. But when you get that covering, when you forgive, when you apologize, you're releasing, you're now letting go. And that thing can cause no more pain, no more hurt. But you got to be in a place of wanting to let go. You got to be in that place of wanting true peace. You have to be in that place of wanting true happiness. You have to be in that place. But if you're not, the only thing a person can do is pray and move forward. Pray for your soul that you don't miss out on the kingdom. That you don't miss out on going to heaven. Because the devil made you feel like you don't need to forgive somebody. You don't need to extend grace to somebody. You're going to end up in hell. Period. Point blank. You're going to end up in hell. It's time to move forward. It's time to let go of all this foolishness. You don't know when your number is going to be called. I don't know when my number is going to be called. Who wants to be left with regret? Who wants to be left with, I wished I had? Who wants to be left with that? We are all under the umbrella of grace. The Bible speaks of when the man, uh, uh, he was forgiven for money or whatever that he owed. But then when he left, see, grace was extended to him. And when it was time for him to extend grace, he wanted to do bodily harm. Come on now, we can, this, this stuff is foolishness. We want the Father to continue to cover us with grace. You want the, I mean, you want the biggest umbrella he has to offer. But then you don't want to extend grace. That's, think about that. Think about that. Every day that you don't want to forgive and let go and move forward. But you feel entitled to God's grace. You feel entitled to God's covering. You feel in, uh, entitled to God's protection. Come on now. What you want from him, you should be willing to extend that to somebody else. Because if you don't, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. That will be your portion. That will be your reward. That will be what you was living for. That will be what you was fighting for. I'm just saying, something to think about. I wouldn't intend on going this way, but I always just tell the Holy Spirit, have his word. Have his way. Because one thing about it, he knows who's going to come on. He knows who's going to come on during the live, and he knows who's going to come on after. So keep on coming by. Keep on coming through. This word, it'll get you right. All you got to do is humble yourself. It comes with humility. It's hum it comes with um, understanding you don't know it all. You don't have it all. But it also comes with the understanding, I got to leave here. I got to leave here. So, I just, I just, I just walk in obedience. Whatever he gets on, when I get on, whatever he gives me to speak, that's what I'm going to speak. You know, and it's for to help somebody. It's really to get someone out of bondage. It's it really to bring some, someone in the, um, the acknowledgement of truth. It, it's here to help. It's here to encourage. It's here to uplift. It's here to speak life into. I don't always, I never know, especially if you come on after, I don't, I never know who um, is viewing the, the live and listening to the devotional. But I guarantee you, I have some repeat offenders. I guarantee you, they coming by daily. They ain't going to come on live because I can see and others that's on can see that you are looking over. But that's okay. That's okay. That's what it's all about. God will use whatever he need to use and whoever he need to use because he said he wishes that no man perish. If you don't want to perish, if you don't want to be lost, if you don't want death to be your reward, you got to be ready to divorce sin. You got to be ready 
to divorce sin. Even if you engage to sin, death will be your portion. It's time for some divorces. It's time for some spiritual divorces to take place. I'm just saying, he just dropped that. So it is what it is. But I got to get off here. I got to head down the road. I pray that everyone have an amazing day. I pray something was said that will cause you to search your heart. That will cause you to search your motives. To cause you to search your intentions. And again, let go of that hot pot. If something is causing you pain, let it go. If something is causing you not to love, let it go. If something, I mean, let just let it go. <laughs> you know? And some people may say, well, it's not that easy. Well, hell is real. I'll tell you that. Forgiving may not, the devil make you think that it's not easy, but heaven is, but hell is real. Well, heaven is real too. But heaven is uh uh hell is real. Let go, let go of that hot pot, hot skillet, cast iron of unforgiveness. Let it go. If it's causing you that much hurt, why would you want to keep lugging it around? Let it go. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> I, you know, when the Lord gave me that um, example, I'm like, my God, Lord, that is the truth. People's running around holding on to stuff that they saying is hurting them when all they have to do is let it go. Let it go. I got to go. But I pray everyone have an amazing day. Don't allow no negativity. Don't, you, don't even entertain it. Don't text it. Don't message it. Don't inbox it. D don't uh, FaceTime it. Don't entertain it no kind of way. Enjoy your day because this is the day that the Lord has made. You're not going to see this day again. I'm not either. He said to rejoice. If you entertain in foolishness, you're not rejoicing. And don't allow no one else to cause you to enter foolishness. Don't even entertain it. You got to remember time is winding. You got things to do. You got people you need to uplift. You got people you need to be encouraging. You got people that you need to be speaking life to. We all are connected to a nation. Look for your nation. Don't look to tear me down and destroy me. Look for your nation. There's a nation with your name on it. Go find it. Until next time, be blessed.